episode 287 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. It's back. I have returned. I've had my sad little moment, my sad little four months of just fucking disappearing. All right? And yeah, cool. I've been through some traumatic surgeries and a bunch of other shit and and a lot of big stresses in my life. But uh, if you watch the video on my YouTube channel, by the way, a new set, hoo-ha, Right. If you watch the video on my new channel, on my on my YouTube channel, all right, the new video on my old YouTube channel, it's ten years old. All right. If you watch that video, there was one thing that I left out, and to be honest, I lie a lot. You know, I I find joy in in lies, not telling malicious lies to hurt people, or or even telling telling lies that that would really alter the course of the world. I like telling little lies and I like omitting truth, all right? And is there is there any better lie than omitting the real truth, all right? And the real truth is, yes, obviously I've been through a lot of surgeries and I haven't been able to speak without fucking lisping. That's another thing, all right? You need to fucking raise your standards, okay? When I when I came back to this podcast, all right, with with fucking a cage in my mouth that made me lisp, and a gap tooth so bad that you could fit a McDonald's straw in the middle and still have room for a silly straw as well. All right, when I came back and, and I was lisping like that, you probably should have stopped listening for a bit, but none of you did. And while I appreciate the loyalty beyond words, all right, what a wonderful thing that you did for me, all right? It's also time to admit that you need some better standards for what a podcast is and should be. <laughs> because fuck man, I couldn't I could barely even fucking edit the thing, all right? Not good. But what I was saying was I lo- I, I I I admit omitted some truth, all right, from my video. And uh, yes, I've been through a lot of horrible shit and a lot of traumatic surgeries and the recovery for that was horrible, okay? But that's that's not that's not the real reason why I disappeared for four months. The the and you know I, I get I get personal on this show. You guys know that. Um, I've you know I've some of my most sad moments I've I've expressed here. I've I've cried here with you, uh, and I've always been honest on this show. And the I think I think that you know obviously the surgery didn't help and. We fostering a child made life stressful and, um, you know, not being able to work, that's money issues and all that kind of stuff. But I, I think like the, the final straw for, for me with everything was, was probably Keelan's death when he was away. Um, and it's not, not just him dying because, you know, there's, there's, there's obviously upsides to, to even horrible things that happen. But I think what got me about his his death overseas while he was in Los Angeles was just the just the way that he died, the horrible, violent way that he died. Because as you guys know, he's no longer with us. He went on holidays and in LA, and, and and just the the violence that he experienced in his final moments is just something that I'll, I'll I don't think I'll ever be able to process. And maybe that's not something that I should be able to process. It's not something that a normal person should be able to see. Cause as you guys know, he was live streaming at the time uh, of his death. He was in skid row antagonizing the homeless, but the homeless in LA are, are very different to the homeless in Australia. As he found out, you know, homeless people in Australia are like down on their luck. They could, they could obviously there's, there's problems, but for the most part, if you're homeless in Australia, you can get out of that situation because there are a lot of resources lacking though. They may be that you can engage with and, and, and you could come out of that situation. So a lot of the homeless people, there's a lot more hope in Australia down on their luck as they are homeless people in, in America that I saw it, it, There's no way out for you. If you get to that point, you're fucked forever. And, and also they're, it's, they're treated like it's, it's your fault, which is a horrible way to treat poverty. Like sometimes bad things happen and you're unable to make money and, you know, things landslide. Next thing you know, you're on the street. But um, what Keelan didn't realize as he was antagonizing the homeless, as he usually does in Australia, is that they're a lot more, they're a lot more dangerous and they have a lot more resentment to take out uh, on people. And, you know, just the, 
the extreme poverty that those people have experienced in many cases, the racism they've experienced, the, the trauma and, 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 you know, the mental health issues that go untreated, all of those horrible things that, that, that happen to people in that community, they took that out on him uh, across the live stream, which went for three hours. And uh, the things they did to him will haunt me forever, but also just the, the, the screams of pain and fear that Keelan let out uh, during his live, last live stream is just something that uh, is probably going to sit with me forever and, and those that viewed it. I think you can still watch it on Live Leak. It's still up there. It's uh, it, You know what? Actually, it's worth watching. Um, but I think what really got me, what, what really just made me just kind of um, want to stop doing comedy for a while were, were, were probably his last words. Um, cause it, towards the end, you know, when they got bored and they're like, well, let's finish him off. This is getting boring now. Um, he, he screamed for me. He screamed for me. So, so of course I was watching, I commented, I'm not helping dickhead. A, a, but then he started screaming for donations and for super chats and for people to donate to his live stream. Um, and I, and I saw that and, and. And I saw that the, he spent the last of his energy calling people that were watching but not donating poor, but then also call, calling the people that were just taking his life from him poor and laughing at them for being poor and telling them to donate to the live stream, even though obviously a lot of them had no phones. And I saw that and, and I just thought, how could I make anything funnier than that? How could I make... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm back. All right. I'm here. The, the podcast is going to come out every Sunday, uh, earlier for Patreon supporters. Uh, I'm recording it today on a Friday. So Patreon supporters will get it Friday night, Saturday, uh, whatever. We've got a brand new set here as well. Uh, brand new set. Do you guys like the TV? How good's that? It's actually on. Listen to that. That's pretty cool. 50 bucks off Facebook marketplace. I tell you what, you can get a lot of cool things on Facebook Marketplace. This thing's probably going to burn my fucking house down, um, which is which is great. Let me know if you want it on or off, because at the moment it's on. But if that's going to annoy you, uh, I can turn it off. Um, we got some some brand new LED lights. We're really setting the mood. You know what this? You know what this set is? This is I love this set, right? And uh, and the inspiration was for it was. Do you guys remember when Joe Rogan got his $50 million Spotify deal or however much money it was, all right, $500 billion, the last fucking article I read? That number keeps going up, doesn't it? Must be inflation, right? You remember when he, he, he got the new podcast deal and then he moved to Texas and he, and he, and he launched the show in his brand new set? Uh, that was like, a, it looked like a, an evil Star Wars bunker with the red LEDs everywhere and and uh, almost unanimously, unanim unanimously, unanimously, almost un it was unanimous, unanimously. The response was unanimously uh, against the set, and everyone fucking hated it. And 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 he persisted with it, and he kept the set, and he kept doing episodes, and he kept talking about how much money he put into the set, and and every single episode that was released in that set, it was met with more and more hatred and, and vitriol and bile and negative feedback and he persisted with it, uh, but no one could enjoy what is primarily an audio uh, listening experience that doesn't even need visuals, despite the fact that visuals are just so unnecessary and not needed to enjoy a podcast uh, and even the, despite the fact that it wasn't even on YouTube, it was on Spotify, which their video player isn't even worth opening, let's be honest, right? Despite all of those things and how unnecessary looking at his set was, people unanimously fucking hated it and said that they couldn't even listen to the show if he was recording in a set like that. And I saw that and I thought, that's what I want my set to look like. That's what I want. So if you guys don't like it, let me know and I will ignore you. No, genuinely, I'd, lo I'd love to know your feedback. We're going with a red and a black motif for the foreseeable future, all right? Because I'm getting cut up and, I'm, and I've been quite sad. <laughs>
No, I'm I'm back, um, and uh, and I'll will talk a little bit about what where I've been and what's going on. But also uh, the the uh, other than Keelan's horribly violent death traumatizing me a little bit, uh, another reason why I took so much time off the show um, was was because remember when I was releasing this this show every single week without fail, right? Shocking, I know, but I managed to do it, right? We hit a conundrum, didn't we? All right, because the last episode I did was episode two hundred and eighty-six, right? Uh, and, I, and I believe I, I, I promised several times the show was not stopping, and I'll see you next Sunday. Um, and I always fulfill my promises, especially when it comes to consistency. I believe there was a conundrum going on in the in the last few episodes before that, and that conundrum was if I don't miss a single episode, which at that point hadn't happened for like months, right? So it was it was on track, right? If I released an episode every single Sunday from episode two hundred and eighty six to episode three hundred, episode three hundred would have fallen exactly on Christmas Day, which was a Sunday last year, right? So now, right? Obviously episode 300 is not going to happen <laughs> on Christmas. So really, you should be thanking me because now what I can do is I can effectively monetize episode 300. So instead of asking for money, right, to come to some event on Christmas morning or Christmas evening, I can instead ask for money on a much more convenient date for all of us. And you can attend and I can run, run the ball up and we all win. Because as you guys know, now more than ever, it's about the bag. And now previously when I've talked about the bag, it's because I I was doing well and I was celebrating that fact. Now it's an emergency. It has to, <laughs> it has to be about the bag. Because here's the thing about getting a very expensive surgery, right, that they don't tell you. Now they probably don't need to tell you this. Because for some people, it's unbelievably obvious. For other people, you're Lewis Spears. But apparently, this is just all hearsay. It's a rumor that I've heard. You, not only do you have to spend a fuckload of money to get the surgery, you also have to factor in the cost of not earning any money for about four months after the surgery. Now, that may seem obvious to a lot of people of like, oh, yeah, not only do you spend money, but you also can't make money. Uh, that wasn't very obvious to me. So now, right, I'm in my struggle zone, and I would appreciate your support on Patreon. Guys, every, every single episode of the Spearhead Sundays podcast comes out early on Patreon, but not only that, you also get an extra extended uncut version of every single episode that comes out exclusively on Patreon and early. You get access to a, to a brilliant Discord server with, with, a bunch of, with a bunch of memes and cool guys and gals in there, all right? That's great. Exclusive club. You get merch discounts. It's all there. Patreon.com slash Lou Spears. For the love of God, sign the fuck up, all right? So yeah, I disappeared and we'll get into that a little bit later, okay? But what I need to talk to you about right now is something that I saw this morning, okay? And I had, I went, before I went for a walk, I wrote down what I wanted to speak about today. We've got some emails at the back end of the show, all right? I wrote down what I wanted to talk about. I went for a walk with my dog, came home, rubbed the whole fucking thing out on the whiteboard and started over, okay? Because I witnessed something so miraculous and so amazing that I had to tell you about it, okay? I'm going for a walk, all right? I'm in Frankston. So, of course, I've got my taser, right? Going for a walk and I'm walking my dog and every now and then there's this old guy that walks his dog and whenever we cross paths, talks my ear off because that's what you're supposed to do as an old guy, all right? You're supposed to have the type of conversation that doesn't start with a hello and, and also has absolutely no consideration for whether or not the person has time or gives a fuck about what you're going to say. You just start talking. Kind of like this podcast. Let's be real, all right? The, the old man talking my ear off and this fucking show, same thing. I don't care if you don't want to hear it. I don't care if you don't have time. You're going to fucking listen to this every single Sunday. I command it. All right, because I might die soon. <laughs> okay, 
This conversation is about me, not you. And I got one of those conversations. And we've been doing this since I moved in, since I got the dog and started walking it. It's like maybe once or twice a week, we just walk the dog at the same time. And my walk goes from 10 minutes to 30. Okay. And he's talking my ear off as usual. I'm, but this time it's different. I'm sitting down. Okay. And, and he made, he made a fucking path. He took a detour off the path to come and talk to me. Now, here's the other thing about this old man that really interests me. I don't know if he knows, he knows me. You ever have a conversation with an old person more than once in public and go, fuck, does this guy know who I am? Because we've spoken many times before. I know a lot of people that come and see me live multiple years in a row, going on eight years in a row, have that conversation with me outside the show where, where they go, fuck, does this guy know that I've been seeing him in Brisbane for the last five years in a row? And the answer is kind of not most of the time, no. Sometimes, yes, all right? If you're a disfigured fan, count yourself lucky. I'll remember you, all right? If you have a set of magnificent cans, you're in my memory, all right? If or if uh, if uh, if I re- if you really fucking annoy me, I'll remember you. If I don't remember you, you're probably one of my favorites. <laughs> because that means we had a great conversation, all right? You left feeling happy, I left feeling happy, and I got to delete it from my memory and I didn't have to remember you. So if I don't remember who you are, count your blessings. You didn't annoy me. I, I regret. I immediately regret saying that because that's not true. Well, it's partially true. There's some. There's a lot of truth in it. It's a hundred percent true. No, there's some truth in it because now everyone that comes to my show regularly, if I go in the meet and greet afterwards, oh, you've seen me before. Or, What's up, Jason? They'll go. Oh, this guy fucking hates me. He knows my name. <laughs> that's not true in most situations. Figure it out for yourself. Look inward. All right, look inward, analyze your own actions in the shower, have the conversation that you had with me again in the shower, and if you cringe or come up with a few different things that you should have said, you've probably annoyed me. And congratulations, that's self-reflection, and you're a better person after the fact, you're welcome. Anyway, I'm talking to this guy, right, and he makes a beeline for me, okay? And, and I mean a beeline, not because he had to walk around a few different obstacles, just because he seems very unsteady on his feet. I won't be surprised if one day I see his dog walking by itself and 30 minutes down the road I see him face first on the concrete, okay? We're talking that old. And I have no idea, every time we talk to him, I have no idea if he recognizes me, if he remembers previous conversations, if he's talking to me because... He likes my dog or because we've spoken before or because he thinks we're friends. I don't know. I have no idea. But he spoke to me today and I'm sitting down, all right, writing in my little book, some jokes for you cunts. And he comes up to me and talks my ear off. Ten minutes into the conversation, it's a long one. Because normally I, I make my escape much earlier, all right? I don't dislike talking to the guy but I do dislike talking to him for half an hour and that's what he wants. Okay. Because he's one of those guys that, you know, those guys, those old dudes, old women do it as well, where they don't start the conversation. They just start talking and they don't stop the conversation. They just stop talking and walk away. And there's no, there's no space for you to go. Oh, well, anyway, mate, good to see you. I'm out of there's no, there's none of that. You know when you're talking to your friend on the phone and they don't fucking pause in between sentences so you can go, anyway, or, well, I got it, or, whoa, what's the time, or, shut the fuck up, I'm leaving. You don't have any room to do that. So you just have to cop it until their their brain runs out of shit to say. Again, like this podcast. The guy's doing that and we're having our conversation and, you know, he's it's pleasant. You know, he's talking about this. He's talking about that. Oh, we rescued you. You rescued a dog. Oh, I rescued a dog. We're both fucking heroes. And then he goes, he talks to me and he starts talking to me about something else and I'm listening. But then 
This old man adjusts himself in his jeans, right? He doesn't he doesn't put his hands in his jeans to touch his dick. He grabs his hog over the jeans and it is the biggest dick I have ever seen in my life. And I've seen a few. All right? It I am not joking. And I'm talking on the flop. All right, not hard. This man was was softer than butter in summer, okay? But that cock was so fucking big that it looked like he had robbed a deli before talking to me and he got away with a big salami. This man's hog was so oppressive that I could not listen to what he was saying And he kind of lost track of what he was talking about because he was maneuvering his old cock in his jeans and he couldn't find a comfortable place for it because it was that big. And let me tell you something. This man was wearing no underwear. So I saw the full meat print in jeans. He wasn't wearing sweatpants. He wasn't wearing tights. This cunt was in denim and I could see I could see the rings around his cock. I could probably count them and figure out how old he was. This thing was oppressive. It blocked out the fucking sun, this old man's cock. And I have not gotten it out of my mind since I spoke to him an hour ago. And now every time I see him, I'm all I'm going to be thinking about is his hog. Doesn't matter what he's going to talk to me about. I'm just going to be thinking about what he has he has strapped to his leg with a belt underneath those jeans. That thing was was it scared me a little bit. You know, you you think porn's bad for your brain because you see unrealistic body standards. All right? Try bumping into an old man with the biggest hog you've ever seen in your fucking life on the flop in jeans. And he didn't even do it at me either. That's the thing. He wasn't being creepy. He didn't do it at me. He did it because he was genuinely uncomfortable because it was far too big to live a normal life. And I don't think I'll ever be the same. In fact, that's why I've decided to bring the show back is because the memory of his massive old hog has just completely pushed out the traumatic memory of Keelan being beaten to death by the homeless. I don't care about that at all anymore. It's been replaced with a much more fond memory. And that's that's tough competition because Keelan was up there in terms of fondness. <laughs> so now, now every time I talk to the guy, I, I got to think about his huge soft cock. Good on it. You know, he was telling me a story about how um, he had to put a muzzle on his dog because it was the only way to stop the dog from pulling because one time it pulled and uh, he ended up falling over. And I I just wanted to be like, are you sure it was the dog and it wasn't the hog? That kind of tipped you off balance there, you know? And he goes, luckily it wasn't a bad fall. I, and I thought, I'm sure it wasn't. He probably only f- fell over one third of the way and then his cock fell out in front of him, propped him up like a tripod. I, I, I don't know what to think anymore. It's shattered my reality. I thought I knew what, I thought I knew the spectrum of the male anatomy, you know? Myth busted. They get bigger than that. <laughs> Mr. Beast is in trouble, all right? Everyone's upset about Mr. Beast because he cured the blindness of a thousand people. What a fucking horrible person. Of all the shit to get angry about, it's it's a it's a fucking autistic YouTuber curing blind people who can't afford surgery. Yeah, let's get angry at him. Hey Jimmy. Hey, stop curing the blind. It's pissing me off. I don't know. Here's the thing. I understand why people are upset, okay? Because I watched that video and I'm from Australia, all right? We have healthcare. And Mr. Beast is going, "Did you know that 50% of all blindness is can be cured with a 10-minute surgery. 
And I thought, yeah, I knew that. That's why in Australia, we have a very popular charity called the Fred Hollows Charity, where we help cure blindness. Not for Australians, but for people in third world countries. Because in Australia, if you have that sort of blindness, you go to the GP and you go, oh, I can't fucking see anything. And they go, yeah, sure. Here's a surgery you're booked in for next month and you get it done. You walk out, you go, oh my God, I can see tits again. You know, I might need to get that surgery after seeing that old man's cock. All right. But apparently in America, if you have a, if you, if you're blind and even though it can be fixed with, within 10 minutes, they go, yeah, fuck you for being poor. It's your fault. Get a job, loser. Pay for it yourself. And, and, and those people go, oh, well, actually I had a job and I was a highly skilled individual, but then in my forties, I fucking went blind and now I don't know how to start my life again because I don't know how to live as a blind person. I have to learn how to exist as a blind person and then maybe I'll start getting a job. But by the time I've figured out how to be blind without walking the walls and being to read shit, I've lost everything. So no, I can't afford the surgery anymore. Oops. And then and then and then American government goes, well that's maybe you sh- maybe you shouldn't be poor. Have you thought about trying to not be poor? Why don't you get a job? And then the blind person goes, yeah, sure. Why don't, why don't I get a, a minimum wage waitressing job? And they, and they show up to work and the first thing they do is put their fucking hands in the deep fryer. Now they've got no hands. And, and, then, and then America goes, oh, what, you, why don't you stop being poor? <laughs> so I understand why people are upset because here's the thing. It is absolutely fucking insane to even be able to make that video, right? Because you need two things. You need to live in a country where it is possible, right, to become an influencer, right, which is insane in and of itself, all right? That's a very first world thing to be able to do what I do. You know, be like, oh, what's your job? Oh, I talk about old man cock for 10 minutes on a podcast. And for some reason, people find value in that and they give me money because those people are making enough money in their jobs to be able to throw it at people talking about cocks. That's fucking insane. Just that concept. All right. But also you have to live in in a land of opportunity that and be so good at being an influencer that you can do that so well to the degree Many, many thousand times levels higher than what I'm doing it at, which is already fucking insane on a global scale, on a global scale, right? You have to be doing that for so long and for so well with so many people with disposable incomes watching that you can make tens of millions of dollars, right? While at the same time, in the same place, There are people that are so fucking poor, they can't afford a 10-minute surgery to be able to see again. Those two things have to exist at the same time in the same place to make that video. And that is fucking insane. It's insane that there can be a place where a guy can make tens of millions of dollars filming himself doing challenges and shit, but there can also be people making so little money that they can't afford to to not go blind while the government spends a trillion dollars on the military instead of five bucks relatively speaking, to the government on making someone else be able to see. And then that person will then go on to get a job and chase their dream and maybe become successful and pay back that money they spent on their health care a thousandfold in taxes. But instead, there's something so broken about the American culture that they go, yeah, well, maybe those sick people should probably try not being poor. <laughs> Have you tried not being poor while you're sick? That's insane. That's what you should be angry about. You should be stoked that Mr. Beast is doing that. That's great. It's a good thing. It's an undeniably good thing. And yes, he's going to profit out of it, but those profits will funnel back into doing more of this shit. And if he didn't funnel those profits, if he didn't make a profit, he wouldn't be able to do it at all. So it's a net benefit to the world. Yes, he's doing it for selfish reasons, all right? I don't think that Mr. Beast, like started out going, I want to cure blind people. He goes, I want to make a good video and we're lucky that those two interests mesh. Do you know what I mean? We're lucky.
And so are the people. And also all those people that had their blindness cured, I don't think any of them are like, yeah, but... Oh, I wish I wish he didn't make a dollar out of it. They they will be like, oh man, I I would love to watch the video. I can see my kids and kiss them. Oh, is that what my wife looks like? Beautiful. Oh, look a sunset. I miss those. They don't give a fuck. All right. It, yes, it's absolutely fucking disgusting that he is even able to make that video. But it's not his fault at all. All right. It's the fucking system that they live in. All right, it's so wrong that there can be a guy making tens of millions of dollars curing people's blindness instead of the government making trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars spending it on fucking bombing countries you can't even pronounce instead of fixing and cleaning up their own backyard a little bit. And it's that type of environment that breeds a, a homelessness crisis and a mental health crisis so bad that it ends up with getting my friend Keelan brutally murdered on a live stream. Granted, he was antagonizing them, but still, if there were no homeless people, he would be alive today. And I'm not angry at Mr. Beast for that. I'm angry at Joe Biden. <laughs> so that's my thoughts on Mr. Beast, is he's a good person. Or at the very least, he's, he's a guy doing good things for a selfish reason, which is better than him not doing it at all. Uh, but yes, it is infuriating that it's even possible for that video to be made, all right? Like in Australia, if there was an Australian Mr. Beast, he would have to settle with with curing blindness in the third world, right? Which, yes, is is better and 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 uh, causes more good, but it's it's gonna get less views and and it's because you can't, you can't get like a, a sweet old southern grandma crying seeing her grandkids for the first time. You have to fucking deal with Matobo crying, but he doesn't speak English, so it's not really good for views and the retention goes down and that's bad for ad rates and that's bad for click-through rates and then all of a sudden your video is not getting any views and then oh, next thing you know, you've cured people's blindness for fucking nothing. Cool, you guys can see, where's my ad revenue? I'm trying to sell t-shirts here, all right? How the fuck am I going to sell festivals if you can't don't... Be grateful to my charity in English. <laughs> what else has been happening? All right. Um, all right, we'll do my, we'll do my little update of what, what's been happening in, in my life. All right. It's been fucking horrible. All right. Obviously I talked about it in my video. Um, <clears throat> It was just not good. It was like a lot of compounding issues. And and it's, and it's honestly, it started with COVID, you know. Lockdowns happen. Right at the start of COVID, I get diagnosed with all this shit. And I'm like, oh, my God, this, this is amazing. All right, this is perfect. The world is shut down. I can't do my job. So this is the perfect time for me to spend in recovery when no one can do anything, right? Next thing you know, they shut down all uh, treatments, uh, and my treatment was for some, all, all like non-essential treatments. And for some reason, my fucking surgery that I need to stay alive is voluntary or, or it was, it was classed in the cosmetic slash voluntary thing because a lot of people get this surgery that I'm getting for cosmetic reasons because it will make you look a lot better. Can I just say, <clears throat> don't fucking do this shit unless you need it. All right, you don't need to, to go up two points on the attractiveness unless you're horrifically deformed. But if you're so deformed that you need this surgery, you probably can't breathe like me, maybe even worse. All right, if you're doing this, if you want to get this surgery that I've just gone through and then the next one after just to look hotter, dear God, it's not fucking worth it. All right, the only thing that's keeping me going is how fucking horrible I feel every day. And knowing that I won't feel like this on the other side of it. If I, I'm just picturing myself as, as like, if I was a person who was like just doing this to look hotter, the amount of fucking regret and anger at myself I would have right now in the middle of it would be obscene. If you're just wanting to look hotter, don't fucking do this. Well, you know what? It depends how good I look at the end of it. Maybe if I look really good, I'll change my mind. If I get to the other end of it and I look like fucking James Bond, I'll be like, you know what? It was worth it. I don't know what it's like to live life as a hot person. Maybe it's worth it. You know, I'm, I'm just like, uh, I'm just like a six with 
really good height. So sometimes I go to seven or an eight, depending on the, on the girl's mental illness. So I don't really know what it's like to live life as like a, as like a nine or a 10, you know, maybe on the other side of that, when I start reaping the benefits of being like super fuckable, I might go, you know what, all that pain that I went through, totally worth it. So I'll reserve judgment. But right now in the middle of it, I'm only being pushed forward by how awful I feel <laughs> right now. So yeah, so COVID happened, obviously fucking horrible for everyone, but you know, particularly horrible for people who lived in Melbourne. We got the worst in the world other than fucking China, as far as I'm aware of. Um, and then, but also terrible because it's shut down my dream. 2019, I'm fucking hanging out with Andrew Schultz in New York. And then in LA, I'm hanging out with Joe Rogan. And then I haven't been able to be a fucking comedian for more than four months since. Crazy, right? just compounding things. So all through COVID, blah, 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 lockdown was horrible for me, all that kind of shit. We all know it. We all went through it. Um, unless you live in fucking Miami. You guys had a lot of fun, didn't you? But also your grandparents are dead. It's a trade-off. Um, get through all of that. And then COVID ends. And I'm like, oh my God, I can finally live my life and break out of COVID. Uh, uh-uh. I got to go through my own little mini lockdown with my shit. It's like, I'm, it's, I feel like I'm stuck in COVID again because but it's, I feel like it's worse because everyone else gets to do their shit and live their dream and move forward and succeed. And I just have to sit there and watch like some fucking sad comedy cuck, <laughs> you know? So everything starts to fucking fall apart. Plus my, my sleep apnea and shit got so much worse because something that should have been treated in like early 2020 has been left until 2023, right? Three years of it getting slowly worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh, and, uh, you know, Man, so many fucking horrible things happened since then. It was COVID, and then, and then uh, uh, this wasn't a horrible thing. It was a very stressful thing. We we uh, started fostering a kid, my girl's little brother, um, and that has its own like challenges, obviously, because you you foster a kid because they they need to be fostered, right? So you don't you don't get like a brand new baby that's that's that nothing's happened. You, you're fostering a child and you've got to work through all of that. And I, I just can't, I know I can't go into details because it's, it's very personal, but you know, you can imagine, right? You're fostering a kid, you can imagine, okay? And that's amazing and that's very, very rewarding and, and you see the benefits of that and he's doing so much better, which is amazing. And I'm very proud of him, but, but go, getting to that point together, so difficult. And uh, then uh, I do the comedy festival, and, uh, um, that was great. But then I fucking got this surgery and that was horrible. And, uh, it, everything took a giant downturn and I, I listened to the doctors and the doctor said, oh, you'll be back to work in two months. And that's true. If you guys need the surgery, anyone listening, that is true. If you have just about any job, even a physical manual labor job. After two months, I could have lifted shit, moved stuff around, all that. I could work in an office. I could do this. I could do that. If your job is speaking, you can't go back to work in two months or you can, but you can't do it well, as you guys saw, you know, like, fuck man, speaking was so difficult and it was painful and it sounded awful. Like, go and listen to a little bit of the last podcast I did, 286. That was when I was really, really good at speaking with the spacer in my mouth. It sounds weird. It sounds like I got food in my mouth. And as as good as I got at sounding, it never got easier. It was it was almost more difficult to to put so much effort into speaking clearly, like I am now. It feels easy now. The braces make it a little bit annoying, but if it's for the most part, it's easy. To speak clearly with all that shit in my mouth was so fucking hard and difficult that I couldn't do podcasts without having to take, like, basically take the whole day off. It was exhausting. Uh, and then I, <clears throat> and then I, uh, I, man, I, I lost my dog. I lost, not Bobby, she's fine. My, my dog that I grew up with, my family dog, Olive, I lost her and, and it, it fucking destroyed me. It fucking ruined, I don't know. What it was, it was just like the final straw and it really hurt me. Um, and uh, it was, you know, it was, I, I actually took a whole week off work and I went and I spent a week with her. It was beautiful. I cooked her food and I took her to places she hadn't been for ages and I made sure she was comfortable and all this kind of stuff. And then we, we, we let her go. And that was a, that was beautiful. But man, it fucking, it, it was like the last thing that really, really broke me. And I don't think I got over it for, 
I feel like I'm I'm only just now starting to process it and all of those memories where they're returning to sa- to happy memories again instead of horrible sad things of like the time the beautiful time I got to spend with her rather than this horrible awful thing. Um, <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> and that happened and that really hurt. And then, and then I had to do this, this fucking tour, um, which I, I loved the tour. The shows were amazing and I'll be posting clips of it soon. Uh, cause, cause the shows were so good and the crowd work was amazing. And, and the feedback afterwards was brilliant. I actually love doing smaller shows, more shows, but smaller audiences. So I performed with like pretty much the same amount of people as my last tour, but I got to do more shows, which was amazing because I filmed more clips, but it was probably the wrong call for my health because it meant so much more work. I was doing two shows a night. Those shows would often go for an hour and a half, sometimes two hours each. And by the end of that late show, some of those shows, I would get off stage and my mouth will be bleeding. And after that, I then have to meet everyone, which I love doing obviously, but it's such an effort. Um, <clears throat> Cause I got to fucking remember all the people that annoyed me. <laughs> um, and, uh, and all, while all of the, all that, all that shit was happening, uh, from COVID until four months ago, I was just ignoring how unbelievably sick that I am. My sleep apnea and my not sleeping and my my chronic fatigue and falling asleep during the day and not being able to remember things and, and all that kind of shit. I was, you know, even now I was, just, I was just reading again, like symptoms of sleep apnea because I just haven't really looked at it for a, for a while. And I've just been looking at going, oh, do I have any extra ones? And like a huge, huge symptom. One of the most common ones is like anxiety and depression because your, your brain, when you sleep kind of replenishes um, serotonin and dopamine. And if you don't do that, you cannot feel happy. It's impossible. It's like a lot of people that are, that are like clinically depressed. Their brain doesn't produce that chemical. It doesn't matter how many amazing, cool things they do. They can help that, but they can't fix it. That's when medicine comes in. And that's essentially how I've been fucking feeling is I've been unable to rest, which means I've been dealing with all of this shit that's been happening in my life, like general crazy stresses like how to survive during COVID as an entertainer and, and uh, how the fuck do I speak uh, and not being able to eat solid food and having incredible mouth pain and a horrible gap tooth and lisping and not being able to do my job well, fostering a child, losing my dog, uh, money troubles because of all of this shit, all of that shit compounded and I wasn't able to fucking process it because I'm also not sleeping. (laughs) And, um, yeah, I, I just I just got to a point where where uh, I was like not acknowledging how sick I was, and my body shut me down. And uh, I'm doing be- I'm doing a lot better now, but uh, you know, obviously we had to let I had to let the team go. Rosie's moved on; she has a new job now. Uh, she's doing great, and uh, it, it was not her fault at all that any of this happened. I just got really really sick, um, and uh, that's that's what happens when when it, when you run a small business and the guy that runs the business, can't do it. It all shuts down. You know, I can't replace me. I am the product that we sell. Um, so unfortunately I had to let the whole team go. So it is just me. Uh, now, uh, I've spoken to Keelan. He might jump on the podcast every now and then, but I, I can't pay him for it. So it'll just be if he wants to do it, if he feels like doing it. Um, if Patreon picks up, we might be able to make that permanent. That's why I'm really pushing Patreon and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, that, that's what's been happening. But the upside of it all is uh, I'm really refreshed. And uh, I think for the for the first time in, in a really long time, probably since Tasmania, I'm like excited to make things. But unlike Tasmania, I'm in an environment where I can actually make things that I really uh, am proud of because uh, Tassie was like, I was excited and it was cool and it was great, but it was like survival mode. You know, we were in this shitty little house and all we had was a green screen and the podcast didn't look very good and and we were we didn't know anyone uh, and we were in a small town and we couldn't do too much. But what we did, I'm really proud of, but it didn't like look amazing or it didn't, um, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to make other than a couple of videos and some stand-up stuff. Uh, but now I'm in this position where, uh, it's all me, so I can really put effort into how things look, how things are edited, writing and scripting and all that kind of stuff. Um, and while I'm probably going to be less consistent with all of the other videos, the podcast I'm going to put a big effort into doing every Sunday, while I'll probably be less consistent with all of the other type of stuff that I'm doing, I do think the quality is going to go up a lot because it's just all done by me and I can do it exactly how I want and I'm not going to like stress myself on um 
pumping out stuff uh, like, you know, twice a week or, or sometimes fucking seven to 10 times a week. Like I was when I had a whole team because we could do that. So it was very much like a, a mad rush to get to the end of the pipeline and put shit out and put shit out and put shit out, which, which is great. But when I was sick, it was just stressful. And also I was sick, so I couldn't do a good job. Now I can. I can actually fucking speak again. I uh, obviously still feel pretty bad because the sleep apnea hasn't gotten, any, hasn't gotten any better. But I do feel better than what I was feeling with all of that shit in my mouth. If I had my time again, I just would have disappeared for the six months that I had the shit in my mouth. And I just would have... Uh, what I probably should have done in hindsight is I probably should have let everybody go before the surgery and... And then I probably wouldn't be in, in a more dire situation as it's not a, that wouldn't have been better. That just would have been better financially, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm here, I'm doing better. And uh, I'm not going to fucking talk your ear off about all the shit that I've been going through and have gone through. Cause I've already done so many fucking videos about it and I feel like I'm whinging. Um, but uh, uh, oh, oh, and also that the uh, Luke and Lewis ending really, really sucked. I really didn't want to do that. And it, it really felt um, it, it, w it was really like, um, uh, just, I think a very bad thing, uh, to have to happen. There was no, f obviously no, f no falling out and it did have to end, but it was just like, oh, another thing that like COVID and my health issue has, <clears throat> has like taken from me, <clears throat> man, my, I'm losing my voice. I'm not used to talking this much. <laughs> I haven't done this podcast for four months. Uh, but yeah, the, the Luke and Lewis show ending because, you know, we lost the studio and my surgeries and Luke's touring and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it it was just like, oh man, another thing taken from me where I, where I felt like Luke and Lewis was the one thing through all of this that was going either okay or well throughout all of this like COVID and stuff. Obviously during COVID, it wasn't going that great because it was Zoom and it wasn't very good. But when we came out of that, it was good. Uh, but then, uh, you know, it was, it just had to end and that was fucking awful because it was like oh man I, I loved this it was like my baby I loved it so much and it just had to stop and it's there's nothing that I could do about that and it, and it wasn't like a failure either because I can deal with failure if I do something and it fucks up and it doesn't work I'm like oh well I've learned learned from that but it was just like another thing that had to stop or didn't go well or ended due to no fault of my own or Luke's uh it just had to and that sucks and that really kind of hurt because I think that was the only thing that was like, that was going well enough for me to get a, like a lot of creative satisfaction out of it during all of this time. Because even though I couldn't speak and shit, at least someone on the show could. <laughs> so it was like kind of funny. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's where I'm at and that's what's happened. Uh, and I'm feeling better now, but I'm just going to take my time and I'm just going to do what I can do. So at the moment I'm starting very slowly. I'm just going to do, um, main channel videos and the podcast. And then I'm going to see what that feels like. I'm going to see, can I do this? Well, can I do this consistently? Can I add something more? Can I add in stand up clips? Can I add in podcast clips? Can I add in real talk? That kind of stuff. I'm just going to start slow ramp up. And if I figure out, all right, I can't do all of these things. I'm going to pull it back. And I'll let you guys know. But for now, just expect um, Spearhead Sundays every single Sunday. Um, and <clears throat> the the main channel videos, uh, hopefully at least once a week, maybe more, maybe less. I'll just do whatever I can. And uh, what do you think of the new set? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to see you uh, jump on Patreon right now because I'm going to go and do the Patreon uh, exclusive part of the show. And uh, I'll talk to you there. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next Sunday, and I hope you have a shit one. See you on Patreon. Bye. And the book was better. You know, they changed a few things, and I didn't like it. You know, you really should read the books. The books are better. You know, if you like that movie, you should go and read the books because the books are better. You know, uh, I, I know you, are, you uh, simpletons think that uh, seeing the movie is the peak form of entertainment, the best way to enjoy this franchise, but you really should try to read the books. <laughs> I have no friends. You know, those cunts, they're the worst.